Hello and welcome to this tutorial um, for Digital Media 2 students on how to use the TriCaster. The TriCaster Studio is a virtual set. So basically, you have a control room in a small little box. I'm going to teach you a little bit about the TriCaster and its functions and interface today. You'll be able to apply these um, new skills when you are shooting your own shows in which you're going to write your own scripts for, create your own video packages to roll in and out of the on-camera show, and you can cut multi-camera um, angles using this device. Let's have a look at the TriCaster and its overall interface first. We're going to get started by talking about the kinds of things you see on the screen here. The TriCaster has a preview channel which is where you see the um, camera you're about to take. And when you take that camera, it jumps over to what's called the live output. Um, or I like to refer to it as in television, the program out. Um, within those two boxes, you're able to see over on this panel your monitors or your um, input sources. These can be um, cameras or tape. So here we have the ability to put in one camera two cameras, three cameras, so there's three cameras in this setup. Um, you can have an external device such as a PowerPoint from a laptop, a DDR, which is basically a tape playback. So you can have files like QuickTime files that roll from these two devices and you can cut in between the two devices. You can also have a background, which is something that you can pre-create and then move into this um, input. And this is black, which is where you fade to and come up from. Now we're going to have a look over at the effects bus. I'm um, sorry, the, um, well, I like to call them buses, but there's the first one is the effects bus. Up here are various inputs on the effects row. So you can put a piece of tape from DDR1 into the effects row, and that'll have an effect on the virtual set, which we'll get to in a minute. The live bus is what you're taking live. So when you see me cut between camera two and three, and three has nothing, or um, you know that's black, it looks like this. Oh, three is a virtual set set up right now. So it looks like this when I cut between those two. That's live. However, if I wanted to cut to three and put it in the preview, and then maybe fade to it, or have some kind of a transition, I'm able to do that by previewing, putting the next camera source into preview and then dissolving, like so. The preview bus is where you would put that input you'd like to be next. So for example, if I'm going to cut between what's on camera now, which is camera two, which is the chroma key, and let's say um, the background, which looks like this, I would put background on preview, and then I could dissolve to the background that I want and then I can dissolve back. And these are where you can do this. Now you can do this right on the, cam on the screen with your mouse. I'm moving my mouse and you're able to use um, the live bus here and let's just say the background and you could just move this fader bar up and down. But we also have a keyboard, which I'll show you in a minute, called Live Control, where it actually acts as a switcher, where you're able to switch and cut with your hands on the keyboard live very similar to a real control room. Right here is your fader bar, which is used to just dissolve, or you can just take between the two sources like this. Depending on what kind of transition you'd like to use, this um, right here, this box that you're seeing is your transitions bank, and you can load various transitions into that bank by just double clicking on it, and then that kind of transition will occur on the screen as you desire um, using the fader bar. So if I wanted this really fancy um, sparkles, I can just double click on that, making sure it's in my preview bank, and dissolve. Now, going into this, and we can explore this in a little bit, what kinds of transitions you can add? There are a number of them, and all you would have to do is tab between them, um, and you could also add and remove what's here. So um, this is, leaves you a lot to um, play around and get creative with. So we'll explore that in another tutorial. On the bottom bar of this is the recording um, 
I'm sorry, the various inputs that you have. So if I am using the first tab here is called DDR, um, and that is my tape. So I'm going to double click the tape, and as you can see, it's playing right up here in DDR1. And I just double clicked it here to play it. Now, if I wanted to take DDR1, all I would need to do would be to put it onto the preview bus here and then use my fader bar to dissolve. Oops, I guess I did it live because the fader bar was down. But you could dissolve to it and from it. So think of that as your tape deck, the DDRs. I'll go into the DDR setup in an another tutorial where you'll learn how to um, load and unload, um, set cues, and you know control the DDRs. Next we have text, which again I'll go into in another tutorial. But basically your text is created in this area, I'm sorry, actually in another tab called te edit text. When you're done setting up, it moves into this by adding, you go to add, and you could add the image or add the text page. And then it goes into what's called your, your preview templates. And your templates then move over here into your window for overlays. And you could toggle between all those graphics that are in the lower box. And you could see their names, choosing who you need, and eventually take and lose off of the live output. And you could fade it in as well, just using the fade button here. Or again, you could use the hot key hot keys on the live control um, switcher. Color background allows you to just explore what backgrounds you're using here. Um, this reflects this in my preview. So if I wanted to change this, I would just go here and create a new, um, you know, background. We'll go into this in a little bit as well in another tutorial. Input setup. Now this is extremely important. Um, the input setup really speaks to the camera that you have online that you're setting up and what you're really going to see. So right now you see a green screen and two stools. However, if I set my inputs correctly and I work on trying to set the setup, what you will see when I take the set is a particular shot from that camera where it can be a virtual set chroma keyed onto the live set. It's really, really a fun thing for kids to play around with and create their own environments for their shows. Um, this setup I will explain in another tutorial as it actually has a lot of components that um, matter very specifically to getting your live set to look great. External outputs really have to do with how you're getting your media off of the TriCaster. Um, for my purposes, I don't have a second external connected to show what we're cutting anywhere else. Um, and I don't export other than to a flash drive. Um, however, you can set up a stream. Um, you can set up a, another computer to display um, what you're doing. And that would be all done here. So we are not going to do a tutorial on this. However, um, it is important to know that you have that capability within this TriCaster. Um, and here is your streaming outputs. Um, so, I'm sorry, external is how you basically are getting the media out, um, maybe on a monitor, um, or, you know, you have three, op three kinds of options for how you can display it. And then record stream can go right to the internet. The ability to stream is here to push um, through, um, depending on your settings, um, what your school set up for. Um, and your IP address would be here, your port. However, again, I just basically, I save to the flash drive, um, which is in another setup. Um, we're going to go over these in more detail, as well as capture media tab and what it does for you, which is where media files that are finished um, play and um, are able to be previewed. Um, and we basically can do a couple of things in this tab. Next is your edit media tab and we actually, this is how we get it off of the TriCaster. We edit it in what's called the storyboard or timeline 
and I'll go over this in more detail in another tutorial. Um, and lastly is your edit text tab. The edit text tab allows you to create graphics um, as well as lower thirds, full screens, um, um, add motion to something, and it, you know we have yet to explore how much the TriCaster here can do. I just want to review the um, various windows that you should know on the interface of the um, first page, the home screen of the TriCaster. Here is your camera bank in live production or your inputs. Here are your effects row, your live bus, and your preview bus. This is your fader bar and you can take, take or auto, um, you know, fade this bar to take one of those inputs and switch between them. Um, this is your transition bank where you can choose how you will transition between those two signals. Your overlay bank which comes from your titles or you can also overlay over DDRs which I didn't really discuss but we could talk about that as well. The DDR screen which is where you're going to cue your tapes. Your text screen where you import the, the text you um, create in the um, edit text tab. The color background where you can choose the background you'd like to try um, to utilize. The input setup which is where you'll set up your chroma key for the virtual set and choose a virtual set background. The external output or monitor output for your signal, for your program out signal, and your recording ability. One thing I didn't talk about is right over here, and it's very, very important because without it, you have no sound. This is your um, mixer. The TriCaster comes with a mixer inside of it, which allows you to um, put mics on and or you can monitor audio of, of a speaker using a microphone or you can um, you know track your package which may also your video may also have sound and this is um, you know fading between them using phantom fades and um, you could talk over something so if you wanted to continue to talk while something is playing you could do that you could do setup where you're you know setting it up based on a microphone or a line input um, and phantom power um, there's you know um, Oh my goodness, I'm forgetting the um, pan, the ability to pan. Um, so you have all of these just like you would on a regular mixer. You have the ability to mute signals so that the um, hosts and guests are not talking over you or talking during a package um, and track your DDRs or mute your DDRs. And this is your overall output of the TriCaster signal. Headphones as well has its own volume right there and that allows you to really control the sound that you're um, bringing into the TriCaster. Let's just have a look before we leave this tutorial at the machine itself. So the TriCaster is just a studio in a box. That's what they call this. The studio in a box has um, inputs for YC um, composite um, and you, I'm using just two inputs right now with my cords here. Um, and you have, I could have up to six inputs, but I'd have to switch over the um, layout of the front, um, the front layout. So I would lose a lot of preview monitors if I switch into my six, six signal input. Um, so we just limit ourselves to three because we really want to see what we're doing. And I don't have another monitor to display all six. So um, there's tally lights that represent like what's online. Um, when something is online, so it gets lit up, which I don't know if you could tell. The power button is this little circle right here to turn it on and off, and the blue means it's, it's working. These are our um, flash drive inputs for where we put the um, media to once we're done. Here's our audio inputs, and this is our um, audio, this is our wireless microphone device. Um, we have a speaker so we could actually listen using our phone's input. So that's about it for this tutorial. Please choose the next content area or topic that you want to learn more about um, when learning the TriCaster.